What's up everybody? This is Motor Merc coming to you from beautiful Chino, California with the final episode of my Alaska series. I'm going to be wrapping it up today by talking about our final port of call, which was Victoria, British Columbia, and then talking about what we did in Seattle because we stumbled across quite a surprise there, a little treat. So I'll just dive right into it here. Victoria, British Columbia was pretty much for us just a nice way to round out the cruise. We didn't really have too much planned there. Actually, we didn't have anything planned there. We just pretty much were going to walk around town. We heard it was a walkable city, so we were just going to hop off the boat and kind of wander around. It turned out that they actually have this group of volunteers that hangs out where the cruise ships empty onto the docks, and I doubt that the cruise companies themselves are very happy with this or that the tour companies are happy with it, but the volunteers are there basically to help you figure out stuff to do around the city that doesn't cost any money if you just want to walk around and enjoy the town. So it was pretty cool that they were there and they helped us decide that what we wanted to do was go and visit Craig Derrick Castle, which actually wasn't free, but it was so cheap that it might as well have been free. It was like a couple of bucks to get in. And it's basically a Victorian era manor which was built out of stone masonry instead of the things that Victorian manors are normally built out of, and that caused it to look like a castle, so they call it a castle. And uh, I guess it was made by a family named Craig Derrick or something. <laughs> So anyway, I just like historical stuff, historical buildings. I like old architecture and old style, fashion. So it was a pretty cool place to visit. Just walk around and see what opulent wealth looked like back in those days in the 1800s. It's very interesting to me because that house and everything in it was built for about $500 million adjusted for inflation. Not $500 million those that era dollars, but $500 million today dollars. And when you look at a $500 million today house, it's nowhere near as elaborate. It's nowhere near as finely crafted and elegant. It's just modern architecture is so goddamn boring compared to the, the style that they used to design with back in those days. So anyway, we got done at the castle and started just kind of wandering around downtown Victoria. We stumbled across Chinatown. We stumbled across a delicious brewery. Actually, one of the best breweries I've ever been to in my life. And I have been to dozens of breweries. This one was called Swans and they're, they have mastered their craft. I don't know what else to say about it. They were delicious staff was friendly and knowledgeable as well so I mean when the bartenders sort of started getting the sense that I knew what I was talking about with beer and that I had brewed before myself he started giving us free tastes of stuff and everything so it was a fun time there I'm sad I don't have any footage from it but it was good it was good from there we wandered out into basically what amounts to like a farmer's market a bunch of people just have like stalls set up and stuff you could kind of walk around and do some shopping found a poutine cart enjoyed a little bit of Poutine. It was actually very good. I am used to having much worse poutine. We found a dude playing bagpipes in a kilt for no particular reason. <laughs> we saw a gorgeous, gorgeous sunset over the water, and pretty much that was about it. Uh, back to the ship and then back home again. Well, not home exactly, but to Seattle at least, to the port where it all began. And we sort of had all day in Seattle and nothing planned to do there either because our, you know, the, the cruise ship arrived at seven in the morning and our flight wasn't until like six in the evening or something. So the cruise company provides an amenity for you to leave your bags with them so you could kind of go and enjoy the city and then just come get your bags back at the end of the day like in the afternoon so we did that and we went to a restaurant called uh, Tillicum Cafe recommended by Anthony Bourdain and it stood up to the hype it was quite a good place to enjoy a delicious breakfast and when we were done with breakfast we decided to go see the EMP museum on a tip from another person we ran into on the cruise who said there was an exhibit there we'd be interested in seeing 
turns out what they had was a Star Wars exhibit. They had all the original, well not all of them, but they had a, almost all of the original costumes from Star Wars. The original Star Wars and the prequels. And I have got to say, I was truly impressed by this collection. Not only because of how much it contained, but because of the quality of the costumes. I mean the, the craftsmanship that went into them. They are so much more elaborate and so much more detailed than you could ever pick up on actual film. So, I mean, you can tell that the, the fact that they're making these costumes so, so beautiful and putting s this kind of effort and detail into it, that even if George Lucas was kind of losing his mind a little bit towards the end there with the prequels, at least the people who were still actually hands-on with the production really still cared about it, really loved what they were doing, and really wanted it to be the best set of movies that it could be, because even the prequel costumes, when you look at them up close in person, obviously my video is not going to do them justice either, but these costumes are just so beautiful, even the prequel ones, and you can see little details that harken back to the original films that you would miss just from watching the movie, but when you see it in person, it really shines. As a huge, huge Star Wars nerd, uh, it was kind of an emotional experience to end up actually seeing this costume exhibit there. But that wasn't all! There was more in the EMP Museum. They also have a fantasy exhibit, where they have a bunch of fantasy movie props and costumes. We didn't know that was going to be there either. They had uh, stuff from Lord of the Rings, stuff from Princess Bride, stuff from David Bowie's Labyrinth, stuff from Game of Thrones, all kinds of stuff. The list just went on and on. Conan the Barbarian. Ugh. It was a, an incredible exhibit. And even that was not all. They have another room there that's like a sci-fi room. And that sci-fi room contains a bunch of props and costumes as well. And the general sci-fi room had stuff from uh, uh, all kinds of stuff. They had stuff from Back to the Future. They had stuff from Blade Runner. They had stuff from Space Odyssey. They had stuff from Men in Black. Classic stuff, new stuff, old stuff, anything you could think of. It was pretty crazy. The amount of stuff. They had stuff from Aliens, they had stuff from Predator, they had stuff from Terminator, they had stuff from Star Trek and Star Wars. Hundreds and hundreds of props and costumes. It's just an amazing, amazing experience. The EMP Museum was really impressive. It's not just pop culture and music. They had so much stuff there for geeks to enjoy as well. So anyway, we spent hours and hours and hours there and uh, eventually had to leave to go catch our flight home. That about wraps up the trip, actually. Well, we caught our plane and came back to LA and uh, we were done. And with that, uh, this is gonna wrap up Motor Merck's Alaska series. I hope you guys, uh, those of you who have stuck it out this far have enjoyed it. I know I have, but uh, now we will go back to the regularly scheduled Motor Merck drivel. So like I said, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.